What's up everybody and welcome, once again welcome back, this is the Book It Better YouTube series, WWF 1994, and this in particular episode is In Your House. We are in October, no we're not, we're in September of 1994, this is the September episode of In Your House, we got a great show coming up, we're looking at the pre-show here, I am joined once again, as always, by the beautiful Maxine Whitman. Maxine, how are you? Hi guys, I'm good. You? I'm alright. I'm alright. We are ready to go. We have made it to In Your House. For the record, we have now, well, I have now made it farther in this game than I've ever made it before. I don't think I've ever made it more than two months before. We are now on to our third pay-per-view, I think. High five. High five. Is this our third pay-per-view? I have no idea. Oh, look at that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We had In Your House in July, SummerSlam in August, and this is now September's In Your House. So, we have made it farther than I've ever made it before in this game, and I have the YouTube series You the Fans to thank, because this has kept my interest. So, we're going to jump right into it, and uh, you, you want to say something? Just saying that we're like the little train that could. We're like the little train <laughs> You're gonna pitch a new character in a little train that could, aren't you? Oh, that would be great! Yeah, I didn't I even think it. about that. I knew it. It's like, <laughs> but it has to be a little person that just like is able like to. Like Dink the Clown? No, he's weird. He's a little person. But he's just weird. The entire character is weird. Yeah, we would change his character to the little engine that could. Can we just. The little him? Dink that could. <gasps> the little Dink that could. There it is, right there. <laughs> Maxine is good with a new character. Anyway, we're starting off right here, and we are getting. The Power Cats, as they are now being known, <laughs> versus the One Two Three Kid and the Rock and Roll Express. And the Power Cats are going to go over here in 10 minutes and 21 seconds when Scott the Stray Levy defeats Bob Gibson by pinfall with an even flow DDT. It scores a 60. Lex the Tabby Luger, head and shoulders above everyone else. Uh, he scores. What do we got? Uh, Lex the Tabby had a 67 performance, Scott the Stray had a 54, Jeff the Persian had a 46, uh, the 123 Kid and Robert Gibson both 46s, and Ricky Morton a 50. So, overall not a bad match, but... Who's this guy? He is severely tan. Who, that right there? No, he's... This? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's Lex the Tabby Luger. Oh, the Tabby Luber. The t Tabby Luger? <laughs> <laughs> That's Lex the Tabby Luger. Uh, so, it, <clears throat> excuse me, basically, this is the Power Cats. This is their first match together. Uh, they get a win uh, over some jobbers here. Not Please real jobbers. tell me that they're, like, dressed like cats. Yes, these, so they are taking their inspiration from Cats the Musical. Oh, so, yeah, yeah I, should, I should actually kind of give a little background on their character here. Yes, they have become obsessed with Cats the Musical. They now identify with the feline lifestyle. Mm. Uh, so yeah, they're coming down to the ring uh, dressed like Cats the Musical. Uh, their ring gear is reflective of that. Are they uh, licking their paws? They're licking their paws. They're essentially literal cats at uh, this point. And coughing um And coughing up hairballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's close to 60. It's a DC. It's a pre-show match. It's not on yeah, our actual not bad. We're going to go to this next segment here. And this is, uh, this is the Power Cats backstage now after their match. And they're mm -hmm. scratching at a post. Oh. So they're in their own locker room here. Uh, Jeff and Lex are scratching at a post, and uh, Scott the Stray is uh, paddling a little ball around the room and some yarn. He's got some yarn going around with him. And so they're just, you know, doing doing cat things. Okay, cat things. It goes a 50. It's a D plus. Are we going to get a dog in here just so, you know? Hey, no spoilers. Oh, okay. Maybe a, a mm -hmm. mice. Something. A mice. <laughs> no spoilers. Anyway, moving on. We're gonna, that's our entire pre-show. We're going to move on to In Your House. And we are opening it up with Randy mm -hmm. Savage in the rematch with Chris Jericho. It gets an 84 rating. And in 25 and a half minutes, Chris Jericho is going to slay Randy Savage. <gasps> He's going to defeat him by submission in 25 minutes and 23 seconds. He taps out Randy Savage with the Lion Tamer. He beats him? He beats him. What's a Lion Tamer? It's his finishing move. His uh, It's like a... I feel like it back. should be something like a unicorn, you know, slayer. Chris Jericho is not a unicorn warrior. <laughs> He's not the unicorn warrior. 
You can pick anyone on the <laughs> roster and make them the Unicorn Warrior. It's not Chris Jericho. Okay, we'll, we'll continue with this. Uh, regardless, gets the show off to a real strong start. It is Randy really Savage the best pulls an 87 grade. Jericho pulls a 64. Uh, uh, Randy Savage improves in performance here. And uh, so, yeah, Jericho is going to go over Randy Savage in, in what is... He whooped his behind. He whoops his behind. But he's... He's not supposed to. He's young and still naive, and he doesn't know what's going <laughs> Well, he's a on. young, naive winner right now, because he goes over Randy Savage. Both. And Randy, spoiler here, a little backstage view, Randy was not happy to do this job. So, mm. but I he imagine. does it. Uh, that's what happens when you're not re-signing with the company. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. That's so, uh, big time spoiler there, but without, uh, without going too much here, this is basically going to be Savage's most likely last match with the company. His contract expires in eight days. He's refusing to negotiate with us, so he is gone after this match. So Chris Jericho is going to win this. He's going to win the story. Uh, he's going to come out on top in the, of that uh, of that rivalry, that storyline. So okay. that's the reason that was done. Uh, had I known, had I known Jer- uh, Savage wasn't going to resign with us, Jericho would have gone over at SummerSlam, and we would have just cut ties with Savage then. Um, yeah. But instead. Chris Jericho's over here on In Your House, picks up the biggest win of his career. You know what? This is actually very good because it, it helps. It ultimately helps Jericho still, you know, of keep on climbing. Of so course. It, maybe SummerSlam would have been better, but I think this is the ideal situation. It just boosts this um, mm-hmm. Chris Jericho, my unicorn, mm-hmm. a little further along. Well, regardless, uh, Jer- uh, so Savage still has eight days left on his contract, so we will likely see him uh, on Monday Night Raw. Um, but this will be his last week with the company. Oh, he's gonna be mad. Okay. Really, yeah, he's gonna be mad. So, moving on to our next segment. Does anyone improve? Yeah, Savage improves. Moving on to our next segment. Uh, we get the tag team championship match, which is just kind of a cluster match. It's a four-team elimination match. Um, also, for the record, this show's being held in Puerto Rico, so we are limiting our, our angles here. So this will be, this show's gonna be heavy on the matches, uh, longer matches, uh, but if we want to pull a good rating in Puerto Rico, the game won't let us not work in Puerto Rico. It keeps sending us to Puerto Rico, and I have to keep manually changing it. So we're going to run a pay-per-view in Puerto Rico. Uh, Figure this is the one to do it. This is heavy on on store, on store matches anyway. But okay. this match, we're going to get the Hardy Boys versus Smoking Guns versus Yokozuna and Crush versus Sid and Adam Bomb. Sid and Bomb are going to successfully retain their titles. Uh, they eliminate the Smoking Guns first, then the Hardy Boys and finally, Yokozuna and Crush. Sid and Bomb make defense number one of their tag team championships. Uh, Yokozuna is going to be head and shoulders above everybody else. Um, and let's see. Yes, he was. Sid Vicious. Was he off his game? He had a, scored a 53. Um, it doesn't say that he was. Well, it doesn't say that he was, um, but he only scores a 53, which is, well, I guess that's about right for Sid. His angles are going to be hot, but his matches are not so great. <laughs> Regardless, uh, Sid, and, Sid and Adam Bomb are going to retain their titles. They eliminate Crush and Yokozuna last. Uh, the main thing that we take out of this match is that Crush and Yoko looked good. So okay. they're going to lose this match, but they look good here. Okay. Um, Yokozuna in particular uh, comes out of this looking good. So. To our next segment, this is going to be an angle featuring Owen Hart and Jim Neidhart. Again, it's not going to score as well just because it's Puerto Rico, um, and we have to go, we we can't use their entertainment skills uh, because they don't speak Spanish. But this is basically the announcers saying that that Owen Hart and Jim Neidhart, the new new Hart Foundation, was supposed to take on uh, the Steiner brothers today. However, that will not be happening. Because the New Heart Foundation caught Scott Steiner out in the parking lot and sent him to the hospital. So they jumped him in the parking lot. They actually are going to hit him with their car. So they hit Scott Steiner with their car. They sent him to the hospital. Steiner's hurt. We don't know how long he's going to be out for. Um, but he's not going to be on this show. Uh, so that match will not be happening. Oh, well, I'm disappointed. We do, however... So the Hart Foundation is going to come down to the ring, they're going to gloat, and Rick Steiner is going to come out on his own and say he doesn't need Scott Steiner with him, he's going to get his revenge tonight, 
he'll take on both both members of the Hart Foundation. This is a brave little boy. <laughs> Obviously, the Hart Foundation is going to win this match. They win it in just over 12 minutes. Um, Owen Hart is going to tap out Scott uh, Rick Steiner with the sharpshooter. Uh, Owen's going to uh, carry the match, and Rick is actually the weak link here. Uh, so Rick Steiner's in-ring performance will be a 46. Boy, that sucks. Uh, yeah, Jim Neidhart a 63, and Owen Hart an 83. Um, but the match itself pulls a 77, a B grade. So about what I would have expected this to be. Um, the Hart Foundation versus the Steiner brothers probably would have scored higher. Uh, the Steiners work way better as a tag team. Uh, but this is going to be Rick taking on both of them. Uh, it's just uh, it just basically is what it is. It's uh, it's it's Rick kind of getting a um, um, kind of getting a, a little bit of trying to get some revenge here, but obviously two on one, you're not gonna win that battle. It's not a fair battle. Uh, we get any worker improvements? No, we don't. Moving on. This is gonna be an angle featuring Shawn Michaels and Diesel, and uh, it's gonna be uh, basically the backstage and they shake hands. What? So, it's, what is wrong with Diesel? Well, I mean, you know, HBK, they're best friends. I mean, oh, you've, clearly had, he's you've had falling outs with your best friend before, and then kind of, it happens. We all have arguments with our best friends. Yes, we do, but we have some time to at least think about it and argue about it, not just go ahead and well, say, it's okay, you screw me. No, I don't think they're saying it's okay. I think the backstage saying, you know, all right, you know, we'll settle this out in the ring. We're not going to argue about this. Oh, we'll well, last around. week we did decide that they were going to um, they're gonna go against each other. That's that tonight. Like, so oh, that's this match. This is them okay. backstage saying, hey, we'll settle it out in the ring. We'll put our differences behind us. We'll have a good, hard match. Never mind, So You're right. I understand <laughs> your position in this situation. You're yeah. absolutely right. So basically that's what that is. It. It's basically just kind of you know, pushing that. Hey, there's we'll still we'll respect out. and we love. We respect each other. We're having a tough time now. We're in, but we're going to handle know. this like a right. man. And we are going to head into that match. Um, and it is Diesel versus Shawn Michaels. It gets an 83, a B-plus grade. Uh, and Shawn Michaels is going to defeat Diesel while using the ropes for leverage. Basically what we're doing here, Shawn Michaels is going to pin Diesel. And he's going to put his feet up on the ropes to give him a little extra leverage to keep Shawn, to keep Diesel down. Humps? Like so he's, he's getting... cheating. He is cheating. So he's cheating. So. Look, little weasel. I <laughs> told you. Diesel, you do not trust this guy. So Shawn Michaels doing what he has to do. He's going to retain his Intercontinental title. Um, and. Uh, so yeah. you're basically telling me that Shawn Michaels is the original ally I cheat, I steal. Um, <laughs> uh, Maybe. Before um, Eddie capitalized and put it out there. He was the original, like, weasel that did it. Just to win. Sean's no the what. weasel. Sean is the weasel. We get no uh, work improvements here. So after that match here, uh, HBK, he kind of laughs. You know, Diesel's pissed, obviously. HBK laughs. He puts his hand out to shake. Hey, you know, hey, you know, you do what you got to do. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> ha -ha, you know, hey, I gave it a good match. But, Please you know, the better man won today. And Diesel's not going to have it. Diesel's Thank finally going to snap. And Diesel is going to jackknife powerbomb. Go for him. He is going to jackknife powerbomb. I don't have a turn. Uh, and turn babyface um, against Shawn Michaels. So he's going to powerbomb Shawn Michaels mm -hmm. and walk out of the ring. Diesel's had enough. He makes his babyface turn. Uh, interesting note that we just got, though, uh, when I made that turn, um, was that the turn went badly uh, because too many of our turns have been sudden surprise turns. I didn't realize the game does that. I did get that message before. So we've been hinting at a Diesel babyface turn mm -hmm. the past three, four weeks, mm -hmm. but I forgot to set him to turn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've been hinting at it, but the game hasn't been recognizing that we've been hinting at it. Mm. So when we turned today, it's as if it was a surprise turn. So that turn goes poorly. So I don't really know what that's going to do Without a rating? With the rating. I mean, it still scores an 87 rating. What it might do is it may hurt his momentum a little bit, or it may hurt his gimmick. Oh. He may have to kind of build it back up. But oh. I, we needed to turn him here. So, yeah. you know. I mean, Sean has been screwing with him for so right. long at this point. He needed to do something or just... Right. I mean, it, it needed to, it, the turn needed to happen. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. I needed to turn here. I didn't, have, I didn't have more... We don't have more time to continue... 
it, it should happen here. But regardless, it does happen. Uh, we get a Diesel power bomb to Shawn Michaels. It solidifies him as a face. It may have went badly with the crowd, but for our purposes, it went okay. We'll we'll be able to build Diesel back up. We'll be able to fix it. It's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, this segment scores an 87 um, to B plus grade, solid grade for our for us. And we will head now into our main event. It scores a 75. Mm. Ooh, it's a B minus. Not terrible. Uh, Brett's gonna defeat Razor in 26 minutes with a victory roll after Bam Bam Bigelow distracts Razor Ramon. So you'll remember that Bam Bam beat Razor uh, early on in the tournament, but he used the ropes and cheated, or he held the tights. Razor had the decision turned over, took that spot from Bam Bam. So this is Bam Bam getting a little bit of revenge. Basically, Razor gets his title shot here, and Bam Bam's going to interfere, distract Razor, and Brett's going to roll him up. This is why Bam Bam needs a pebble, so she could... Be the voice of reason and tell him that he absolutely <laughs> should not do this for his own career. Well, that's true. Um, the The reason this match gets a 75 rating mm -hmm. uh, down here, Razor Ramon and Bret Hart don't have any chemistry. They don't seem to click, and it makes for an awkward bout. Oh. Uh, so that is good to know. Um, both of them. I mean, Bret only got a 77 rating, and Razor a 65. They're both mm -hmm. always up in the 80s. Yeah. So... Uh, it does kind of stink a little bit. I would have liked to have maybe revisited this. Uh, obviously, this was kind of a one-off match here. Um, and the story is Razor versus Bam Bam. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, so it'll be a one-off. We'll get Razor and Bam Bam kind of in their story now. And Brett will move on to his next challenger for the title. Okay. Um, but uh, is that's going to be our show. That's it. Yeah. Hold on. I think it's going to be a little bit low because we're in Puerto Rico. So I'm guessing it's 72. No, it'll be higher than 72. I'm thinking... The main event only scored a 75. That's going to hurt us. But our other matches were really good. Mm -hmm. Our angles were really good. I'm going to say this scores a 77. Okay. I think it'll get us a 77, which will be a disappointment. But, considering we're in Puerto Rico... But, but, if we proceed, we'll touch a little bit more about my unicorn idea, right? No. <laughs> no. You're we'll not going to save it... that for a creative meeting. <laughs> We're going to end the show... A 78. A 78. So, oh, that's not, not bad. terrible. It does lose us popularity in 11 regions. Ooh, why um, so many? I thought it was 77 always, it's almost like... No, that's for the storylines. Basically, the way the game calculates whether you gain or lose popularity. Mm -hmm. So, you'll have popularity in a certain region, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for every show that gets a grade lower than your popularity number, mm -hmm. you lose popularity. If it's higher, you gain popularity. So, if we're... If our popularity is 81 mm. and we get a 78 show, yeah. we're going to lose some popularity. Minimal popularity. A 78 to an 81, not going to go. Same as if, if we scored an 85, we'd gain popularity, but it's going to be just a little bit here or there. It's not a huge deal. It's not enough to, like, knock us down or whatever. Um, our goal is to get an 8 at some point, right? We, well, yeah. I'd love to score a 90-rated show. Yeah. Um, and I have a feeling, not to... Get hypes up here. Uh, but, knock on wood somewhere. But the Survivor Series card that we're planning out could be a very good show. Okay. Um, which is odd because I'm not really a Survivor Series guy. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy with where that Survivor Series is starting to go. Okay. Um, well, I can't wait to see. So, yeah. We'll have to see that. So, that's going to do it. We'll uh, continue on here. Uh, oh, we're going to make a post-show show uh, speech. Sure, why not? Let's uh, let's have Shawn Michaels. Let's uh, let's point him out as a good example. Chris Jericho. Let's uh, let's praise him for a great performance. <laughs> and Randy Savage. Let's uh, let's tell Randy Savage he's worthless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna make that speech. So Shawn Michaels is pleased. Jericho is very happy. And uh, Randy Savage doesn't seem too concerned for us with our speech, at least for now. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. There you go, that's what I meant. <laughs> All right, folks, so that's going to do it for uh, In Your House here. That's going to do it for this episode of Book It Better. Um, we'll be planning out, uh, I'll be putting up a creative meeting shortly. Uh, not shortly, within the next couple days, within this coming week, most likely. Um, and... Um, We'll be getting uh, In Your House October planned out, Survivor Series will be planned out, 
we're picking up steam on our Royal Rumble plans, and again, discussing a little bit of, uh, of WrestleMania stuff. So if you want to hear that, if you want to check into that, you look like you want to say something on the microphone here. You're, um, you're in my closeout speech. The Unicorn. And the Unicorn Warrior. <laughs> Maxine might be working on the Unicorn Warrior. Um, I'm chipping away, guys. Bit by bit. We got a lot of talk about this Unicorn Warrior, but she's not really pitching anything other than the Unicorn Warrior. Yeah, but this is your guys. So you get your think, stuff together. You think about it, and I just, <laughs> I bring out the ideas, and you work it into whoever it is. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. We'll think about it. It's not going to happen. <gasps> Anywho, so that's going to be uh, a thing. Well, let's check. Uh, WCW had Fall Brawl. Uh, let's see what the rating on that was. Jericho. Jericho. Fall Brawl. Fall Brawl scores an 88, so we got our ass kicked here. Um, That's brutal. Yeah, so we got our ass kicked there. WCW pulls an 88, we pull a 78. Um, Can we just make one agreement of not ever going to Puerto Rico for any of these men or Ben? Well, honestly, this show would have been a lot better if Jerick, if uh, if Razor and Brett clicked. Mm-hmm. That killed us. The 76, was it 76 or 73? Mm-hmm. Whatever it was, uh, 76. Uh, that main event killed us. Had that main event been in the 80s, our score would have been in the 80s. So all our other matches were good. So them not having any chemistry, that's what did it. It wasn't necessarily Puerto Rico this time around. But, so, uh, that's going to do it for the show. We lose this month to WCW. That'll give us a little, probably another hit uh, in our national battle against them. Um, so if you want to, uh, look, out, uh, look out Wednesday for uh, two, uh, two posts. We'll probably have... Uh, we'll definitely have uh, the fallout from In Your House. We'll definitely have Monday Night Raw going up on Wednesday. Uh, and we will most likely be putting up a creative meeting on Wednesday as well. Uh, I don't want to guarantee that. Uh, we'll most likely be putting that up. Um, excuse me, I'm burping here. If, uh, if it doesn't go up on Wednesday... Uh, if we opt to do a roundtable podcast instead of a creative meeting, I will pro- probably be posting something up uh, just myself uh, within the next week or so because uh, we do actually have some developments here um, that that would be uh, that require a creative meeting to kind of figure out what we're going to do with. So thanks for joining. Uh, we had a blast here for in your house. Uh, looking forward to the fallout show of this. Looking forward to bringing you some more content. Mm-hmm. Probably, uh, hopefully getting you guys another creative meeting. Uh, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Drop a comment in there. Let us know what you thought of the show. And uh, let us know what you think of the creative meetings as well. Do you want us to keep doing those on video? Do you like them in the iTunes as a podcast? Do you not like them at all? Uh, so for Maxine and myself and the rest of the Book It Better crew, um, thanks for stopping by. And we will catch you next time. <laughs>